Francisco on Long Island here in uh, Central Islip. I figured I would get here and all these spots would be taken because it looks like they only have maybe 15 spots. And I'm going to go take a nice uh, seven hour nap, I guess. It is now almost 6.30. I got my four hour or three hour or so nap in. Um, depends how you want to look at it. Doesn't help it I think the Long Island Railroad is literally right on the other side of these bushes here and there's a train crossing over here so about every 35 40 minutes or so a train goes by here blaring its horn whether it be um, freight train or passenger train so that was uh, that was fun but I guess I at least got a nap in so that's, that's, well, that's reefer life for you. So I'm just waiting for a phone call here so I can get in the, um, get in the door. That's pretty much what I'm waiting for right now. A uh, couple of us are lined up here against the side of the uh, curb and we're just waiting for our phone calls. And as soon as that happens, I'm going to go park and then hopefully take a, another two hour long nap. But we shall see. Uh, I got about, I'm just hitting five and a half hours now here on sleeper birth. So uh, hopefully I can get the rest of my break in, take a nap, like I said. And then we get to go to the Bronx. We get to go to Hunts Point after this. And hopefully uh, I wrote down on the paperwork, I have another stop in my appointment time but you know they don't care probably but I would like to make it on time that way I can just make that delivery and pretty much take a freaking 10 hour break I don't know I'm tired so we're gonna wait until we get this phone call and then we're gonna go park we checked in we're gonna uh pretty much walk back to the truck and uh, yeah I'm pretty much doing this on my phone now because my Insta Go 2 has been charging now for three or four hours and still doesn't want to turn on so I think maybe leaving a sit with the battery drain did not help it so yeah so I think uh, my Insta Go 2 might be done and over with and that means no more POV shots at least you know, hooked up to the camera, well, hooked up to my hat and, you know, walking into places. I mean, I could do it with the ins uh, the DJI Osmo I have, but, you know, it's a big, giant camera. The the, uh, the Instago 2 was this tiny little camera I could just stick on my hat. But we're going to uh, finish up my nap here, and hopefully I'll be done in about two hours. And then I get to go endure the Bronx. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so we're gonna have we're gonna have breakfast, and uh, I'm kind of doing the carnivore diet. So what breakfast is gonna be for me is a couple hard-boiled eggs and some breakfast sausage. All right, so each one of these patties is 100 calories. So there's a 300 calorie breakfast, I guess. Well, it'd help if I turned the inverter on. And I guess we'll just broil these. And then uh, I'm gonna crack some of these hard boiled eggs. These are hard boiled eggs in here, so. I guess I'll have uh, three sausages and maybe two hard boiled eggs. All right, let's see if they're crispy yet. All right, they look crispy now. So there you go, there's breakfast. 450 calories of pure protein and a half and half non-sugar iced tea. So, I just got the capstone, so we're 
just about ready here so I'm gonna finish this well hopefully finish this breakfast uh, pay my capstone and uh, yeah then we get to go wait through two or three hours of traffic to get it to the Bronx for my next delivery all right we got a clean bill so we're gonna be getting out of here and then I get to sit in, I don't know, two or three hours worth of traffic to go 50 miles. Get this out of here. Well, that took a little bit to start. Guess I'll wait for this guy to get out of my way. In a quarter mile, turn right onto Spruce Street. I wonder if that box truck's taking my door there. Let's put the other seal on instead of walk back there without it. I ain't got nothing, nowhere to put the shit. Looks all right to me. I think that day cab's taking my spot. Let's get the hell out of his way. Oh, fuck. What the? F <laughs> Head east towards Spruce Street. Well, that almost, uh, I almost got stuck there. I don't know why that guy, well, I guess he just wanted to pull up to be out of the way. I don't know. Shit, I think I just effed myself here is what just happened. Maybe not. All right, well, I was hoping to get my eight hour break in, but I guess I moved. Moved the truck a little too fast, so that was the end of that, but at least I still have drive time. So, I guess uh, I'll still be able to get over there to the Bronx. Huh. I almost thought I screwed myself there for a second. But we're going to, we're going to park over here. And I'm going to finish some paperwork up. And then we're going to get out of here. So here you go. Here's uh, something fun. So you see this, guys? There's a dumpster right there. And these guys, well, Cisco here gives us a parking lot actually to park in. And what do we do? We sweep our trailer out right on the ground, right, right where we all drive all the nails from the pallets and everything. And now I gotta drive through it. So I was gonna pull there, but. So that's what we do. And then we wonder why shippers don't want us staying here overnight and everything. The only people we hurt are ourselves. That's all we keep doing. All right, so we went from sitting in two hours of traffic to go to the Bronx. We're now only gonna sit in an hour and a half of traffic. So that's at least a lot better than what it was. You see this intersection right here? This is like a heavily used train corridor. 
I don't know, probably in the last couple hours there's at least been 30 trains have flown by here. And there's a stop, you know, there's a stop here, there's stop lights, they got lines, and that little Hyundai right there is pretty much its bumper is sitting practically on the tracks. So if a train comes and this guy or gal isn't paying attention and doesn't butt up to the back of that van, they're gonna go for a nice little ride. Uh, I don't know how people just nonchalantly don't pay attention to their surroundings at all. Well, that was surprisingly easy. I just basically crossed three lanes here. Pretty much going rush hour to get over to this on-ramp. I'm surprised that went so easy. There goes the dumb automatic again. From here to probably the Throgs Neck Bridge is going to be nothing but solid traffic. Because, well, all these suit and tie guys are getting over to the island when they get over to the island. Uh, well, I guess I can't say island, they're all islands, but I guess uh, getting over to Manhattan or the Bronx or wherever they're going. So, this usually stays pretty much backed up until, I don't know, around 10. 10:30, 11 o'clock. Yeah, and then you get like a three or four hour period where traffic flows real good here on the LIE. And then you got afternoon rush hour. So pretty much traffic all the time, no matter what. Sometimes even at night, I know when I used to come over here to do oversize, it'd be like nine o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night or whatever. And there'd be a line of traffic over on the other side heading head in um, east so I don't know it is what it is you gotta have you gotta have like the right temperament to drive over here uh, you know if you grew up or lived around here for a while it, it'd probably be a lot easier for you to drive over here but for me I'm not really used to any of this. I mean, I guess over the years of having to drive over here, I've kind of become accustomed to it, but still, you don't, you won't see me just willy-nilly driving around uh, Manhattan or the Bronx. I'm very, I don't know, particular about what roads I get on and streets and stuff and where I stay. And even then, even then I really don't know what I'm doing. I know like a few truck routes and that's about it. So best thing you can do is just take your time and double check everything you're doing when you're driving in New York. Well, New York City, I should say. New York itself ain't really that bad. New York City, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Long Island, the Bronx, Manhattan, um, Staten Island. Over here, there's a, look, there's an old fort. You see over here, if you come over to Throgs Neck to your right, there's an old fort that was transitioned into, I think, a Naval Academy. That fort was built, I think, in like the late 1700s, early 1800s. Not 100% sure, I know I looked it up one time. It's pretty neat, though. We got a tugboat, tugboat towing a crane over there. This is the nice part. You get to actually see like cool stuff. Then you get over there into that nonsense and uh, yeah, it's just nothing but stress and, and anxiety pretty much. But, I don't know, I just figured I'd throw that out there. Just to show you, there are some pretty parts of New York. Well, New York City, I should say, Long Island and whatnot. But that's a shame. Just way too many people. 
way too many bad policies. All right, so I have no idea if that thing, <laughs> if this recorded or not. But anyway, I had to force my way over here um, to get onto this ramp. I basically had to just put my turn signal on for the last, I don't know, three or four minutes and just keep forcing my way over until people either decide to let me in or hit me, one or the other. So I finally got off on this ramp and the only thing is I have to be careful because I don't know how this ramp splits. There is there is a parkway over here and I'm I don't want to get I don't know if if this ramp splits in two and I have to be forced onto the parkway or what. So I'm going to pretty much take it easy right now and not get too carried away and worse comes the worse if I have to force my way over again or force my way wherever I need to go that's what I'm gonna do so you gotta gotta pretty much have uh, nerves of steel and you, you can't let yourself be bullied around here or you end up missing your exit or get bullied onto a road you're not supposed to be on or who knows what so alright so in whoever's wisdom of building this ramp here they decided to have it narrow down to one lane instead of just cutting over here. I, I don't know why, but they decided to do that. And now I just get to fight people that are gonna push me out of the way. All right, well, there's the uh, the parkway, the Bronx Parkway, and I, I definitely don't want the Bronx Parkway, uh, the Bronx River Parkway, so what I got to do is, uh, I guess I'm just going to stay over here, and I think this turns into Sheldon Ave, because I want Sheldon Ave or Sheldon Boulevard or whatever, and that's what we're going to try to do. You're over here, and you're really close to people, and the lane's narrow, you got to make sure you don't you got to make sure you don't take up their lane or they're paying it or they're not paying attention and they decide to come into you because that'll basically ruin my day hey look at that look at that I'm sure no one's coming from there all right I think what I want All right, so I want to go over to the slight right here where this trailer is just sitting parked in the... <laughs> just parked right here on the exit. All right, well, I lied. I think I said it was Sheridan Boulevard or something. And it's, I mean, a Shelton. I think I said Shelton Boulevard and Sheridan Boulevard. So, yeah, if you want to get to Hunts Point, the easiest way is 95 to uh, Sheridan Boulevard. Well... Just in the last 15 minutes, I've probably already been, uh, almost been in like three or four accidents. Just a, just a typical everyday run through the Bronx and New York City. Oh man, stop light after stop light after stop light after stop light. Well, when I get here and I check in at Hunts Point over here, what is it, Nebraska Meats, I'm hoping they just take me right away and unload me. That way I can, I guess, take it easy for the rest of the day. Because I'm going to spend the night over here, like I said, I think I've already said that like three times now, I don't know. I'm going to spend the night over here. Uh, at Hunts Point or in Hunts Point I guess you could say at the uh, market and sometime early in the morning I'm gonna make my way over to my third stop which is I don't know National Grocer or National something it's like a, like I said it's another meat distributor over here and we'll see if I can't get in there early 
uh, before, I guess before all the other guys show up and crowd that place up because it does not look like it's a fun place to back into. Not one bit. So we're gonna we're gonna go through a couple more lights and uh, yeah. get a door here at Nebraska Meats. I'm just getting myself set up here because Hurricane was in the way for a while. So, want that door right there. So let's go open the doors up. doors. Let's put her in a hole, like she says. Let's wait for this guy to go around me. Well, consider I have no idea how to pronounce your company's name. Well, I wouldn't expect anything more or less from you. Well, it's four o'clock and I'm still in the door. And it feels like maybe they took off two or three pallets, that's it. So it looks like I'm gonna be having dinner in the door. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to have dinner and I am going to cook this Asiago peppercorn pork roast. I'm probably gonna call it a day. There ain't much else to record. Whenever I'm done here and I'm done dinner, I'm just gonna pull out and 
try to find somewhere to sit here and uh, probably enjoy my dinner. That's if I get out. Maybe I'll end up enjoying my dinner still here in the door and go to bed. Well, maybe not go to bed, but I'll probably do some jump rope first and maybe walk around. I don't know. Um, and then go to bed. So we'll see how the uh, we'll see how dinner comes out. I guess. So. It's nice that they come out and like tell you, hey, the building might be on fire. So yeah, um, I don't know when they went by. I guess I I was laying back there watching something, probably the, something about the carnivore diet or something. And uh, yeah, FDNY showed up. New York Fire Department. So I, I don't know. Uh, that might be why I'm not being unloaded or it's taking a long time. Right now, there's only me and one other truck here. I'm half tempted to, I guess, go in and see what's going on now. If, if I, I don't see anybody evacuating. Like, I don't see a bunch of people coming out the building, so I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Well, the firefighters are still here, so I don't know what's going on. I guess... They drove the two trucks around the back of the building to see if anything's going on over there. They're all geared up, so nobody seems to care. It's now 4.30, I think. Yeah, I think it's 4.30. I'm finally getting the hell out of here. Well, not really getting out of here because all I'm gonna do is go over to a parking spot over there hopefully when it's empty park the truck and that'll be it for tonight right now in the air fryer i got a pork loin pork loin cooking so that'll be dinner tonight and yeah let's, let's hop in here and find a place to park i guess well at least it doesn't look like parking's gonna be too hard to uh, do so at least I got a parking spot so yeah there you go parking for $30 a night and uh, a dinner hopefully a good dinner well, there you go pork loin with uh, encrusted Parmesan so I'm going to fix dinner here and that'll probably be it for tonight. So thanks for watching Jackknife TV. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys tomorrow with the rest of this load or the last stop on this load.